Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mayor Sullivan, and I want to welcome you to the, this is historic, this is the 40th episode, the 40th episode of Our Brockton, and again, we always say this, but the title of the show, Our Brockton, it speaks volumes, that's what it means, right? It's Our Brockton, our community, our home. We want to have a, a safe home, a healthy home, a clean home, financially stable home. And so as mayor, I always uh, am so privileged and honored to have certain guests come on the show. Uh, today, you're going to be meeting Michael Stort. Um, he's the executive director of um, All One Health EAP. Michael, thanks for being on. Thank you very much for having me. It's a I'm, privilege to be here. Oh, Mayor. thank you. No, I really appreciate it. And so, again, um, last month uh, was Autism Awareness Month, and we talked to um, the director at ARC. Um, and, of course, this is mental health awareness. And EAP has a lot of different offerings that you do. Um, but why don't we start off by, if you don't mind telling the viewers a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Stewart. I'm the Executive Director for All One Health EAP. I've been in the behavioral health care field for 31 years, so I've been 31 years helping people. It's a passion of mine, love helping people, and I also learned over the years that it helps me giving back to other people and being there for them. So I've been doing this, you know, I like to tell people since I was eight, but I started when I was 19 years old working in a, in a halfway house for mentally ill adults, and, and I've never uh, looked back. I've um, been privileged to work for All One Health EAP for about 15 months now and really enjoy the work, and we're privileged to serve the city um, in providing EAP services to your organization. Absolutely. I mean, EAP has been a wonderful partner and contributor. And, and, and you know, because of COVID, we've seen a lot of increased, um, you know, issues among um, people, right, from um, drug and alcohol, domestic violence, and mental health issues are off the charts right now for young and old. Um, you know, people are dealing with a lot. We, we just are, right? And none of us are the same. Um, right now as we were pre-COVID. So with your background and your experiences, you know, and I'd love to talk about EAP and we'll get to that, but in terms of one thing you said to me before we came on and taping is that, you know, every day people need, can do certain things to help their own mental health. And what are some, what are some of your best practices perhaps? Uh, it's just, you know, being acknowledged, acknowledging the importance of mental health, thinking about your mental health. A lot of people, they think about physical health. They think about doctor's appointments. They think about going to the gym. You know, they think about their physical health. I encourage people every day should, you should pay attention to your mental health. And there's things that we can do, whether it's sleeping right, nutrition, being active, giving back to your community, um, reading. There's a lot of things that we can do that have a very positive impact on our mental health and also our physical health. You know, a lot of there's a lot of overlap between things that we can do. I, you know, I, I'll, I'm transparent. We'll talk a little bit about stigma if we have time. Um, I've gone through periods of my life where I've struggled with my mental health, and and I just have reached out to people for assistance, and I've made sure that I do things. I make sure that I sleep nine hours a night, eight and a half, nine hours. I go to bed at like seven, like an old guy, but. You know, there's things that I do, and I, I schedule it on my book. So one of the strategies when I talk to people, and I've worked with tens of thousands of people throughout my career, is, you know, think about when you're doing well in life. Think about the things that were going well. What were you doing when you had periods of success and happiness? And, you know, a lot of times people say, I was sleeping well, I was eating well, I was exercising, I was engaging. I, you know, I work with a lot of people with addiction. They'll say, I was going to support groups. I was connected to a group of people. And then when I stopped doing those things, I relapsed. And I think one thing we've learned in the past three years is, you know, so many people have been tested. Their sobriety, their mental health yes. has been tested. Yes. And, and, and I like to think it's not just COVID, it's everything else that's happened. The world has dramatically shifted over the past three years, the political, um, social things that have happened, and people's attitudes and perceptions have changed. So I, I, a lot of people I know have been tested, and a lot of people I know that had sustained recovery from mental health or addiction relapsed during the, um, you know, the past couple of years. So I, and when I'm working with people now, I'm like trying to get back to that 2018, yeah. 2019, what you did back then to keep yourself well. You got to get back to those things. You have to think about those things that you need to do. You know, one thing, Mike, thank you for sharing that. One thing you, you, you said, and I 100% agree, stigma. Um, you know, when we grew up, um, and even to this day, you know, people don't want to talk about certain things, right? They don't want to talk about alcoholism or drug addiction or, or, or mental health without question, illness. And in um, and, and my humble opinion, uh, that's the absolute worst thing you could do. You need to be upfront. You need to talk. You also need to be 
um, willing to accept help, right? And and don't yeah. close the door on that. And so in terms of stigma, I mean, you've had experiences, you've helped, you said tens of thousands of people yeah. over your career. In terms of stigma, what have you seen in terms of, of stigma and if there's been any beneficial changes to that uh, ideology at this time? I, I mean, I've seen tremendous improvement in Good. stigma. I Good. think 30 years ago, people were not only ashamed to get help, but when they got help, it was like a big secret, right? They didn't want anyone to know that they got help. And now you see people are proud of their recovery and they should be. They've, they've struggled, they've worked hard to improve their mental health or um, be free of addiction. And now, you know, there's a lot of movement around about we do recover and people, you know, as part of kind of the mantra of, of uh, recovery is giving back to others. And part of the way we can give back is sharing our stories and encouraging other people. So I think we still have a way to go. Yes. There is still some stigma, but more and more you see people admitting they have a problem and, and talking about things that they've done to, to get themselves well. And I don't think it should be a secret. I mean, nobody I know, and I know a lot of people, Life is not a plateau. No. You go through ups and downs. Yes. We all go through it, no matter what, where we are, where we're from. And, you know, when we're down, we need help. That's right. we, we should reach out to help. And the other thing, we should not only think about and be aware of our own mental health, but we should think about our family, our friends, our community, our loved ones. Yes. We should check in on them. I mean, I think that was one of the pieces that kind of happened during that period of time where people were so isolated. You didn't know right. if you're family, friend, people were isolated. Yes. Um, and, and that was one of the challenges. People didn't have that opportunity to check in on other people. So, you know, one of the themes that we talk a lot about at, at, at our um, organization is checking in on people. Um, and, you know, again, back to the stigma, there's nothing, there's no shame in getting help. Absolutely there's not. zero shame. And I, I make the point, and I say this to people, it might be a little bit controversial, but there's no shame in getting help. But if you need help, you have access to it and you choose not to get help, I think that's shameful because you have an obligation to yourself and to your loved ones and to your community and your coworkers to get help if you need it. It's, it's in everyone's best interest. Yeah, I mean, I remember growing up as a kid and I grew up here in Brockton and I remember um, people saying, oh, she sees a therapist and like it was this taboo thing. And now that's just a normal course, right? I go yeah. to my primary care physician and, you know, and, and people say, you know, I go to my therapist or I go to my, um, you know, psychiatric uh, assistant or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And there is no shame in that. And I applaud each and everybody that is trying to take care of themselves, right? But you also said something extremely important your loved ones as well, right? And the neighbors next door and people that you have associated with because we're all in this together, right? Yeah. There's an old saying that I keep saying as mayors, we're better together. And I'm not this naive person of a kumbaya moment, but I also know that um, people need to have interaction. Um, that's why I'm so thankful you're here today to share some stories and um, it's gonna be valuable to, to those watching, right? That are saying, hey, what Michael Stewart just said, I'm going through, or I have gone through, you know? So um, why don't we shift a little bit to talk about EAP because you uh, are leading the charge with EAP. It's worked extremely well for our municipality known as the city of Brockton, but people really don't even know what EAP is. So why don't you take a few sure, moments? Sure, so when I, when I first started this job 15 months ago, I'd go talk to a friend and say, you know, you got a new job six months ago, how's it going? And they say, it's going good. And I said, who's your health insurance provider? They name it. Who's your dental provider? They name it. Who's your EAP? They're like, what's an EAP? Unfortunately, and the people that know what an EAP is, they don't know who their EAP provider is. So that's one thing. Ninety more than ninety percent of companies in America have um, an EAP provider. I'd encourage people to know that it is a resource for employees. It is a, a no-cost resource, and you can get assistance. You know, in general, the EAP field is there to help. And what support. does the EAP stand for? It stands for Employee Assistance Program. Yes. So it is a confidential program where employees, usually it's a number in your handbook or on your website. You call in the number and you can get assistance. Um, All One Health EAP has been in business for 50 years. We started in Massachusetts. We've grown. We have 15 regional centers of, of excellence. Throughout the country, we cover over a million employees wow. throughout the country and wow. also have uh, a, a large number of international people that we work with. But, you know, specifically in Massachusetts, you know, we work with the city. Um, we work with lots of organizations, colleges, mm -hmm. businesses around, and we're there two two reasons. One, support the employees, right? So it's a, a number they can call. They can go on our website 
and click a button to request a counselor. They can go on our website to click a button to request financial uh, guidance or advice. We make it really, really easy for people to reach out and access services. And, and second part of it is we're a partner. You used that word in the very beginning. We're a partner with uh, your organization. Yes. And um, I've, we've, we've worked, we're doing some training next yes. month. Yes. We um, have worked with your, your team on, on some important areas. So we, you know, we want to provide value not only to your employees, but to your organization. Very, very importantly, you know, our EAP is completely confidential. So when you call in and you, you ask for assistance, it doesn't go back to your supervisor. It's 100%. You know, we talk about stigma. Yep. Yep. But I also understand an employee doesn't want their supervisor necessarily to know that they've reached out. It's all out. confidential. Everything's yep. confidential. Yep. It's at no cost to the employee. And I also think a very important point, especially, you know, Mental Health Awareness Month, there's a little bit of, of challenge these days. There's been a supply and demand issue, you know, as the past couple of years have unfolded. There's more demand for mental health services yes. than, than some supply. I would say that we're in a good position in our community here and in Massachusetts because we have great um, mental health and addiction providers. So we're in a better spot than a lot of places in the country. Um, and I never want anyone to be discouraged. If you need help, you can get help. This is the city of champions. People are strong and resilient. Um, I, so I, I, I see people read these articles that say there's not enough treatment providers and they just get discouraged and give up. So I don't want anyone to get that message. But as an EAP, you know, we connect people every day. We get thousands of phone calls a day and we make it real easy for people. You call, you're going through a difficult time. You call our 800 number, you go, you can submit an online form. We'll connect you within days to, oh, a, to a therapist. I mean, it makes great. it very simple. I mean, one thing I think that, um, it doesn't matter if you're in the field that you're in or the field I'm in as mayor. We're in the people business, right? And to help people is public service, yes. right? And you've been in it your whole career. You're helping people. Um, your help um, saves lives, right? And helps families and helps support systems. And, you know, what I've seen as mayor during COVID is, you know, some of the efforts that we've done collectively, collaboratively, is to save lives as well. And so... You know, I'm just so thankful, Michael, for your leadership, um, for what your company serves and provides to Brockton employees. Um, but just to finish up, because believe it or not, 15 minutes goes by quick, right, when we're it sharing does, it. it. But does. in terms of if someone is watching this that, number one, doesn't work for the city of Brockton, but is having some, some troubles dealing with some personal issues, as someone that's been in the field, what would be your number one suggestion to that man or woman that's watching the show? Talk to somebody. Find someone, talk to them, whether it's a loved one, a friend. We all have people in our lives that we can reach out to. Reach out to them. Don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed. Um, reach out and, and, and talk. That's, that's probably the number one thing that people can do. Um, there's resources out there, yep. um, whether it's, uh, you know, talking to someone or there's a lot of good stuff online. If I could just plug our website, sure, please. allonehealth.com, um, A-L-L-O-N-E-H-E-L-T-H.com. Even if you're not a, a city employee, yep. we have articles, videos uh, available to the public, webinars, trainings with a lot of content focus on mental health awareness, domestic violence, things that are, you know, we see, we know that people in, in the communities are struggling with. All of those resources are available for, for everyone. Mike, I want to thank you for what you do every day. You make a difference. I want to thank you for driving all the way down here to meet with us, um, to be really a guest on the 40th episode of Our Brock, and it really is an honor and privilege to meet you. Um, and I think that um, what you just showcased and what you just expelled to the to the to the viewers was so very much important. So thank you for what you do. Really appreciate it. Thank you for thank you for having me. And we're, we're privileged to serve the, the city and, and we hope for a long long term partnership and continue to work together. It's been it's been great. We want to continue this great work with you. Thank you, Michael. All right. So again, you uh, just saw Michael Stewart, um, and again, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. So if anybody is um, experiencing um, any type of personal issues, please follow the humble suggestions of Mr. Stewart, who is an expert in the field for years and years. Um, reach out, reach out. And if you need to reach out to the mayor's office, you can always call us here, 508-580-7123. 
We do have a director of social services um, in my office, Jasmine Bratch here as well. Um, but again, we're all in this together, right? And we are the city of champions, as Michael said. So um, I want to thank you for watching the 40th episode. Uh, we will be back in the near future for the 41st episode of our Brockton. It is an honor and privilege to serve as the mayor of the city of Brockton. Be well. Thank you. Bye-bye.